Hey everyone, Truth Surge back with you uh, with another episode of Jesus, Hebrew Human or Mythical Messiah. Just when you thought I had run out of evidence, no, no, I've got plenty more where that came from. Uh, in the previous videos, we've seen questions answered that naturally arise when we take Jesus off of the earth from the first century and put him in heaven. Question, questions such as, who killed Jesus then? If he was never on earth, where did he get killed? When was he killed? We've laid out evidence that answers these types of questions. And uh, so this is how we've been doing it so far, and this video won't be much different. Another question arises when we remove Jesus from the earth, and that is um, the question of, if he was never on earth, how did the early Christians even find out that Jesus existed at all? How did they discover uh, that God had a son? And also, uh, along those same lines, how did they find out what Jesus had done? How did they know that Jesus had been killed and that Jesus had been raised from the dead? Well, we know the gospel story, so uh, we won't uh, be looking at that side of it, but as we have been in the previous videos, we'll look at the epistles and revelation and the apocryphal works that uh, are uh, known to be early Christian works. And we're going to see if we can uh, dig up some goodies, if you will, that relate to this question and hopefully answer this question. Um, and especially uh, our friend Paul is going to come into play here and he's going to help us out in this video. So without uh, any further hesitation, I'm, gonna, I'm going to try to make this video shorter than the last one. So no big long song and dance at the beginning here. Uh, just wanted to set the stage. So where did the early Christians find out about Jesus? Let's take a look. Our first stop is a passage from Galatians. Here, we see Paul telling us several important facts about how he learned of Jesus. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. Paul tells us that the source of his gospel is not from man, but some might argue that it just means it isn't an invention of man. We'll see this explanation melt in the very next verse. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. This seems to rule out any links back to the disciples themselves via oral transmission, which leaves us only a few options left. Here, Paul reiterates emphatically that he did not learn about Jesus from any human being, but he also reveals a little bit more about just where his information came from. A revelation of Jesus. This is no doubt the passage that inspired the Acts chapter 9 account of Paul's Damascus Road conversion, but did he really see a vision of Jesus on his way to Damascus? Is Paul telling us here that the gospel details had been revealed to him by Jesus himself? It is interesting to note that Paul does not say that the gospel was revealed by Jesus or from Jesus, but that it was a revelation of or about Jesus, and this opens up the door for the explanation which will unfold in the rest of this video. In Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, he refers to the gospel again by telling us that he received it, as someone might say of a revelation. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. According to the Scriptures, Paul states this not once, but twice in the same sentence. Here, Paul reminds the Corinthians that the gospel he first preached to them was given to him, not from any human, as Paul already made emphatically clear in Galatians. He then goes on to remind his readers of just where he got this gospel information, from Scripture. Rather than appealing to actual events that had transpired just 20 years earlier, such as Jesus' miracles, which would have been taken as proof that he was the real Messiah, 
or the mere fact that he had risen from the dead, Paul tells his Corinthian audience that he has learned the details of his gospel from the very pages of the Old Testament. When we think of the death and resurrection of Jesus, vivid images play out in our mind's eye. Images of Jesus praying earnestly in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before his crucifixion. Jesus standing before the Roman soldiers being mocked, spit upon, and beaten. Jesus, bloody and weak, struggling to carry his cross toward the hill upon which he would be executed, a hill called Golgotha, the place of the skull. We recall Jesus' compassion while hanging helpless on a cross between two criminals, and even though he was being wrongly executed, he could still forgive them both as well as those responsible for his death. We recall with sadness Jesus' death and the spear in his side, as well as the despair in his anguished cry, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We see the empty tomb and the glorified Jesus appearing before his disciples. And who could forget Thomas, who would not believe that his master had risen from the dead until he had touched him with his own hands? We see Jesus ascending back into heaven to return one day in like manner. In stark contrast, Paul cites none of this, even in passing, in reference to Jesus' death and resurrection in any of his seven letters. Paul cites none of the miracles performed by Jesus. Paul does not refer to the recent events that occurred only 20 years earlier. Instead, Paul can only point to the Old Testament as his source of information about the Son of God. God revealed Jesus to Paul from the pages of Scripture. It rules out a direct visitation from Jesus, for Paul would certainly not tell us that Scripture was his source, but that Jesus himself had appeared to him and told him everything directly. There was no vision on the way to Damascus. There was no oral transmission from any of Jesus' disciples. Paul tells us himself that it came not from any man, but from Scripture.